everybody so today we're going to be working on some strawberry milk cow set nails and here I'm just gonna be showing you what I'm starting with so first of all I've got these little clay pieces of strawberry slice that are like a for like a straight through cut I really like these ones because they show a lot of detail that you would have in the strawberry and it kind of looks like what you would find in a prepared strawberry food item the next thing I'm going to be using is my Beatles Gel Polish A445. It is just a very uh, singular colored white. There's not undertones, it is white white. The next color that I'm going to be using, and this is the color that I'm going to be using for the spots, is another Beatles Polish in the number 748. And it's like a neon pink that I really like and again this one also has some really good opacity um, which is something that I also really like about the Beatles gel polishes is that the colors that are supposed to be creme have a really good opacity. The final color that I have here is Beatles polish color 747 and this is going to be my base coat, my base color. It's this strawberry milk colored is kind of what it made me think of so that's what I'm using for the colors today and the first thing I need to do is go ahead and prep my nails now how I do this is I file them on the free edge to get rid of any little extra plastic tabs and to level out the free edge and then I buff the entire surface of the nail. Now for this nail, I'm showing you in real time how long that takes. You can tell I'm not like being super aggressive, not going super fast. I don't want to like take off a lot of the nail itself. I just want to remove the shine. That way product is going to stick a little better. And then when I'm done with that, I'm going to remove the dust. There's a couple ways you can do it. You can do it with a duster, but the way I find easiest is to rub it on a towel or rub it on the t-shirt that I'm wearing. And then I'll put it back on the peg. Now the rest of these are sped up so you don't have to watch me file nails all day. But it's basically the same thing. Just going through, taking the shine off all the nails, getting them ready to go, ready to, to adhere to the polish that I'm going to be putting on them. I really like these square squishy buffing blocks because they don't take a lot of product or a lot of the nail off. They just take a very minimal but even layer of it and they kind of wrap around all the contours which is something that's really helpful I think. Now you can see they kind of look like sea glass, they're all frosted and that's just because of the etching on that top layer. Before I move on, I am going to clean up some of this dust. So you could use a duster again, but because I have respiratory issues, I prefer to use 91% isopropyl alcohol. I just put it on and then I wipe it off. That way all of the dust gets stuck to the towel with the isopropyl alcohol versus ending up in the air and then being a contaminant that I possibly have to worry about if I'm going to be inhaling and if it's going to cause a reaction with me. Now, right here I am showing you that I'm going to start with this polish, but please do as I say and not as I do. I entirely forgot to add a base coat. The base coat is important. Please do not do this. Thankfully, this will work because these nails aren't actually going to be worn. They're going on a product board. Otherwise, I would have to redo these entirely, which is a pain in the butt when you realize four coats in that you forgot a base coat. Now, right here, I'm showing you how it looks like in real time when I'm painting the polish on. I'm doing really thin, even coats, and I'm doing lots of brush strokes on it to try and even out the color. Thankfully, a lot of the Beatles polishes are self-leveling, so like, um, as I'm going, you can see the nails that have already been done, the brush lines are starting to fall out. But you just want to make sure that you're covering the entire surface of the nail and um, that you are wrapping the tip. Wrapping the tip is important because it prevents the nail from wearing and chipping and 
whatnot when you're actually wearing them. Plus, I prefer the way that a painted tip looks. That looks finished to me. So, again, somewhat personal preference, but it does have a practical reason. Now that I am just about done painting these, I'm going to head and put them in my LED UV nail lamp and we cook for about 60 seconds. This polish takes 60 seconds and different polishes take different times. Most of my colors and my bases are a 60 second cure and most of the top coat that I use is a 90 second cure. Now here I'm just going to go show, go ahead and show you going through all the other coats that I'm putting on the nails. Except that I've sped it up for you so you don't have to sit here and watch me paint nails forever. And in between each coat we are going to go ahead and bake that for another 60 seconds. I do do multiple thin coats so that when I'm cooking them in the nail lamp, the polish is cooked all the way through, that there's no inaccurate curing happening. And I do so many layers because I'm doing such thin layers, I want that opacity still. The way that I tell that I'm done with a color is I'll hold the nails up to a light and if I can still see the light through, like brush strokes, then I'll keep adding a layer. Um, unless it is intended to be that way, like a jelly polish. But with cremes, I like to be able to block out all the light. That way, if you're out in the sun, whenever you lift your hand, you're not seeing brush strokes, which bothers me, but isn't necessarily important. Now that we have all of the base coats on, we're going to start working on the art and this is the moment that I realized I need black so I have my black in A381 which is again another Beatles color and I don't need a lot I literally just need one little dot and now I'm gonna go ahead and show you the tools I'll be using today my first one is this detail brush it's super tiny um, and this is a Beatles brush as well. And then I have a bunch of different dotting tools. I'm going to be using this dotting tool and then later I also break out a larger headed dotting tool. Um, I don't know where I got this brush from. I want to say it came in a makeup kit, but it is a flatter brush that I'm going to be using to add the line work on my strawberry nails. Now first, what I'm going to be doing is adding some cow print to the pointer finger and the pinky finger. And I'm doing the cow print in this bright pink, which I absolutely love. And one of the nice things about cow print is that it doesn't have to actually be super exact. It can be as wonky as you feel like it could be. Uh, if you've ever had the pleasure of seeing cows, especially sp spotted cows in person, the edges on their spots are somewhat rounded, but they're not like circles or anything very symmetrical. Um, so I just showed you real time with the first one and now I'm speeding up through the others. I like to use a dotting tool for these, largely because I feel like the dotting tool allows me to give it the rounded edges that I want, and it also prevents there being brush strokes in the middle, um, and then I just have to let it settle for a little bit so that the polish has a moment to level itself out. And I just love the way that this bright pink pops against the light pink. It's so pretty. Alright, so next nail we are going to be doing is our cow nail. So to start, I'm going to be doing a snout, and I'm doing this in two times speed just to show you a little bit faster, but it, it is sped up. Um, I start with a line, and then I add two dots on either side, and then I'm kind of blending between them to make a very fat figure eight-ish shape. Um, 
and that is what's going to be my base for my snout. Now here you will see me only use the white. Later on I realized that that white doesn't pop against the pink as much as I wanted it to and so I added a corally color and then outlined it in tan but I did lose that footage so it's kind of sudden at the end. Now here I am making some lines to look like um, not fully blended cream and so the way that I do that is I take a medium lining tool which is that blue brush that you just saw and I make big squigglies and they don't have to be precise and then I use acetone on my flat brush and I just kind of fan it in one direction. It kind of is the same technique that you would use as a marble, except I'm not going to be putting any additional jelly layers on top of it. Um, not this time, at least. Because I want it to look like the surface of milk that's just come out of the blender but maybe didn't get all blended. So now I'm going to go ahead and put that in the light and I'm going to cure that for 60 seconds. That way all of the art sets. And then I drop it immediately. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back with that medium lining tool. And I'm going to add pink in between the white lines. So on the thumb, I did three pink lines in two white lines. And on the ring finger, I did three white lines and two pink lines. And again, I'm using the same technique. I'm just using the brush with acetone. I'm fanning the pink out so it kind of looks like, again, like flavored milk that didn't get mixed 100%. And then I'm also going to be adding another layer to my cow spots, which I have sped up for you. Um, I liked the opacity on the first coat but I wanted to make sure that the colors really stood out against each other and especially with them being two pink tones I needed there to be enough variation that it was obvious what it was. Again this isn't necessary but it's something that I found really helped. And you can see that I'm scraping my palette pretty good here, trying not to waste any paint. I just love the way that the, the cow print looks, though, on a nail. It's just so cute. Alright, so here's my bigger dotting tool that I had mentioned earlier. This has this is the biggest head dotting tool that I have, and I got this out for what you're seeing right now, the nostrils and the eyes. So I didn't want to have to like draw a perfect circle. It's easier if I just have a larger dotting tool to do that. So I decided to do the nostrils in the bright pink to kind of tie the colors in. And then I decided that for the face itself, I wanted to do more of a kawaii, cutesy, cartoonish cow. So I decided just big black eyes was what's gonna work for us. And I'm going ahead and go cure that for another 60 seconds in my nail lamp. Now, right now I'm getting the strawberries ready. So these clay strawberry bits are kind of, not necessarily super thick, but they're thicker than like a glitter that you would put on the nail. So the way that I like to do these is I use a base coat to adhere it to the nail. And then I use a top coat to finish adhering it to the nail and then I go back with my drill and I level out the clay piece so that it is more even with the surface of the nail. It takes about half of the bulk of it off and I find that it just it makes it a lot nicer looking I think and it makes it so that there's not stuff poking out of the nail and that's gonna like catch your hair or anything. So here is just me putting on that base coat. Again, you want to make sure that you're doing it in an even thin coat. It doesn't have to be super thick. And that you want to wrap your tip. That way all of the layers are staying adhered in the right way. You can see I'm kind of digging in this bottle. So this bottle is getting really low. But I hate wasting product. So usually I will hold my bottle sideways and kind of dig the last bits of polish out. 
Now I'm grabbing my gem tool. So one end is a wax point and then the other end is like a hollow tube point. So the wax point picks up stuff like it picks up the clay pieces, it picks up glitter, it picks up rhinestones. I really really like it. And then the other side is meant for like once you have it placed on the nail, moving it if you don't like where its position is. And I will use that later but I don't use it right this second. And when I'm placing these on the nail, I'm trying to find the flattest bit where the piece has the most surface touch to the nail. And before I cure this, I want to go ahead and add my next layer of art to my cow, which is these cute little eyelashes. So I'm doing two eyelashes on each side, and it's not anything extravagant, just two little dashes coming off of the eye. Originally, I thought about lining the whole mouth in black, um, but then I realized that I could just make a mouth shadow by just adding the black where the mouth would be. In a cow, their nose almost encompasses their mouth. It's on the same part of their jaw. So you'll see like a little hole when they're standing there. And we're gonna like bake that for another 60 seconds. And then I'm showing you how I use these triangle trays. Now they're designed really nicely to be able to pour stuff back into pots. Um, but the other thing that I really like about them is that especially if you're using rhinestones that have flat backs, if you shake it in that tray, it'll put all of the flat backs to the bottom so that when you're picking up your dotting tool, it's ready to put, be put on the nail. So I really love those little triangle trays. And here I'm just getting my top coat ready. And I'm going to go ahead and top coat over those clay pieces. I'm making sure that I can get all around it, that I'm wrapping the tip, that everything is sealed in. I want it to be as sealed in as possible. That way when I'm filing, it doesn't come off. Um, you will see that I do have one of the four strawberries that I put on here come off, but not super early. It comes off right at the end when I'm wiping and I wish you could have seen my face of defeat. Instead, you just see my hands of defeat. So again, here, just making sure to completely coat that nail. And usually with a top coat, you would need a 90 second cure, but because I'm not 100% needing this to be solid cured, um, I do end up only doing a 60 second cure. And then before I put this in the lamp, I decided that my cow needed a couple biggish spots. So I had to do one at the top and one at the bottom. And I used the bigger end of my ball tool, that way I could just get it taken care of. I also decided to add another dot of the color in the nostril, just because I really wanted that pink to pop and I was still trying to figure out how to get the snout to stand out. And at first I thought adding this pink would help, but I did end up fixing that later. And then I also decided that she definitely needed some eye shine. So I put some little white accent dots in the eyes. And then I wanted to try and keep my layers as even as possible. So I am just applying a base coat over top of the cow print. This is gonna help level it out some because since there's two layers of paint on all of those cow dots. It's kind of bumpy right now and adding the base coat will help it level. And then I'm holding it upside down here just to make sure that none of the product, especially on the strawberry nails, had sunk to the sides. Now while I'm curing, I'm getting my nail drill out. This is my Melody Susie portable nail drill. I love her. She is amazing. And this bit that I have on right now is meant for debulking. It's a ceramic bit with like a medium grit, and I'm gonna be doing it at 10,000 rotations per minute. This drill does go anywhere from 3,000 all the way to 32,000 rotations per minute. I have not gotten it that high before, but she does have a lot of power. 
Now with this first strawberry, I'm doing it in real time. Just showing you I'm going over very lightly. I'm not doing a lot of pressure, just trying to debulk that strawberry. I really like how fast this goes, especially with the drill. Before I got my drill, I was doing this by hand with a file and it was not nearly as reliable. And so now I'm speeding it up and you can kind of tell with the one that I just got done filing how flush it is to the nail and how this one is sticking up. And by the time I'm done, they'll both be flush. I really like doing this. I think it's really satisfying. And then when I am done with this, I do buff the entire nail. That way I take the shine off of it and it's ready to take product again. I just think it's so satisfying to watch how the debulking works and how fast it just gets flush to the nail. Now this strawberry is the one that I had the issue with. So you can see I filed and then it popped off. So it didn't pop off until after I had it filed and you can see on my finger how thin that piece is compared to how thick it was before. So that is me contemplating what to do with my life and then this is me realizing that it's not the end of the world and I can just re-adhere it with a layer of base coat. So if you make mistakes, don't freak out, don't throw the whole nail, it, most of the time it can be fixed. So what I decided to do was go ahead and do my buffing without the little clay piece on there because I didn't want to completely tear it apart. And then after I buff it, I wipe all the dust off and I'm going in with just a little bit of base coat right where that strawberry used to lay. And I put it on with my fingers, but I'm pushing it into place with the cone side of my gem stool tool, gem stone tool. And then I'm putting it back on its stand and I'm gonna cure it for 60 seconds in the lamp just to make sure that it's where it's supposed to be and it stays there. Now while that is curing, I'm gonna go ahead and take my buffing buff and I'm gonna buff out the thumbnail. That way I can re-top it and I can reseal in those clay pieces. And again, I just put it back on its peg. I put it back with the other nails and then I am going to clean up my mess. So one of the big reasons I laid the towel down here is because I didn't want to have to get my dust collector out quite yet, especially since I did need to do some more painting. But in this instance, a dust collector would work or just doing it on the surface and wiping it off later. And now I'm getting a base coat and I'm just gonna go over the two strawberry nails just to reseal in the clay pieces and make sure that everything is kind of leveled out. Especially since I did buff off a little bit of the polish, I want all of them to stay about the same thickness. Once I get these painted, then I'm going to go ahead and cure them for 60 seconds. And when we come back out, I'm just inspecting everything. At this point, I thought I was done. So I'm getting out my top coat here, and I'm putting on a thick top coat with a good tip coverage, lots of glassy top coat all over the place. And I was, at this point, I thought I was done with my art. It wasn't until after I cured this that I took a look at my cow and realized I hated the way that the snout looked, that I thought it didn't really pop. So I went back, I buffed the surface of that nail, and I put a coral color over where the white is on the snout, and I um, outlined it in a tan color, which you'll see when I go to start doing my filing and everything. But this top coat does need a 90 second cure. Now this is the bit that I use when I am preparing the underside of my nails. It's a medium grit cone bit and I really, really like it because it allows me to get really just into all the little corners on the underside. So what I'm doing here is I am buffing out the underside of the nail. The tips of my nails have like a little raised plastic number, then there's like some paint that gets stuck on the tip from my wrapping of the tip and I just really I don't like the way that that looks um, also you need to like 
straighten out the free edge and buff where the nail is going to be adhered to your natural nail plate. So I just do this with all of my nails. It's not a necessary step. You could get away without it, but I feel like it adds a lot of finishing touch to it. And so here I'm just speeding through filing with the rest of them. And it's the same process through all the nails. Just debulking that tip, getting rid of the number that's in there, and then leveling everything out. And I am doing this over top of my McCart nail dust collector. Um, again, it just keeps it out of the air. And this was our final. So this is after I have buffed them. And you can see where I did edit that cute little cow face to make that snout stand out a little bit better. So the next step is to wipe these down with isopropyl alcohol. Now I attempted to videotape this, but I so did not. What I have is I put isopropyl alcohol on a lint-free wipe or a rag, and then I wipe the each nail to get it completely free of all dust. Now this note card in the middle where I'm pressing the nails is a layer of double-sided tape and I am putting the nails on upside down. The first one I did with my hands just to show you you could, but I prefer to use these tweezers. That way I'm not like putting nail or fingerprints on the underside of the nail. That way when I'm done painting it's ready to go on or ready to ship out depending on what's going on. And I put top coat where the free edge of the underside is going to be. Um, I, again, not a necessary step, but I feel like it adds a level of finish that's just really nice. Like if you're using jelly nails, it completely clears the nail up and it doesn't have like that frosted look on the underside. But if you're using creme nails, especially if you have longer nails, like these ones are going to be, when you flip your hand over, it doesn't look all buffed and gross underneath. It looks finished. And it's not necessarily it's something that you have to do, but it is something that I prefer to do. I think it just adds another level of finish to it. Now, because this is top coat, it does require a 90 second cure. And this is the finished product. I did go ahead and put these on with a little sticky tab. That way they could be removed. But I just wanted to show you guys what they look like on the nail. I am in love with them. I love the way that the cow print turned out. I love the, the little cow face. I love the way they, that it looks like blended strawberry milk. Like, I, I'm really proud of myself on this one. I will pat myself on the back. So, that's all for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I hope to see you guys next time. Have a good day. Bye!